Uh, let's go ahead and, and kids, if you're ready to go practice uh, for your Christmas program, go ahead and go. They look so enthused today. That is a, uh, a tremendous song. I love that song. And it, we're going to talk a little bit today about Jesus uh, speaking to us, uh, specifically to us, specifically because he knows us. And he does. He calls us son. He calls us daughter because he loves us personally, right? It's not, it's not just a group of people. It's not... Uh, what, however you want to look at it. It's not he loves my parents, so I'm blessed because of that. He loves you personally, and he calls you son and daughter, and that's so awesome. Um, if you would turn with me to Mark chapter 5, is where we're going to be at. I'll give you a second to get there. I'll tell you, we, we, was, we were supposed to have another quizzing trip on Saturday to go to Cedar Rapids, but... Uh, snow caused us to uh, cancel that stupid snow. Um, but uh, it's going to be good. Uh, just so you know, uh, and I'll an- announce that kind of here this morning, um, uh, Chloe and Cameron, based on how the first two quizzes went that they were able to go to, they're both going to be able to go on and uh, represent the Iowa district at the St. Louis quiz in December. So uh, give them a round of applause, Chloe and Cameron. See, the, bum, the bummer part about this, this trip being canceled on Saturday was it would have been a quiz off to see uh, who the best 10 quizzers would have been. And I think we could have had more of our kids make that top 10 team, but we had to go based on the stats from the first two quizzes. Um, and so, but Chloe and Cameron get to go, uh, and so they're going to be a lot of fun. We have another quiz coming up in December um, in Des Moines, so kids are going to keep studying. You guys are going to keep praying for them, and it's just going to be a lot of fun as they continue learning on there. So um, now we are ready for Mark chapter 5, verse 21. Jesus will give you something to be thankful for, right? So these are two stories that we're going to read here in this passage that you have heard before, that you've, you've you know, listened to before. And I just want to uh, read these here, starting with Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. Have you ever been there? Doctor visit after doctor visit at a family member, and it just seems like it's getting worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they had said, Jesus told him, Don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kaum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. 
Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. Would you pray with me just for a second? Heavenly Father, Lord God, I ask that you would, uh, that you would come into this place. As I, I already believe that you are here. Lord God, would you come into our hearts? Would you let us see what you want us to see out of this scripture? Would you, would you let us know how much you want to help us? How much you want to heal us? How much you want to take the things that we are afraid of, the things that are bothering us, the things that, that seem to be out of control in our lives, and you want to put them in the proper place, in the proper order, and to fill, fill us up with your Holy Spirit. Oh God, in your name we pray. Amen. So this, these are two stories that I, I hope you've heard before. I hope you've heard those stories. Um, they're great stories. And, and I could have picked any, any stories in, in, in this walk of Jesus' life that, that, that show what I'm wanting to show here. Um, and that's the fact that both of these people approached Jesus. Right? They, they, they went to him. It says here uh, in, the, in the first part where Jairus at the beginning of the story in verse 23 he pleaded earnestly with him. He pleaded earnestly with him. He sought him out. Jesus was just going along his way. He wasn't planning on going to uh, uh, Jairus' house um, to do this. It wasn't in his forethought. I'm sure that Jairus had actually been praying to God before this had happened. Um, before he found Jesus, he'd been praying. And nothing had happened, but he earnestly pleaded with Jesus when he found him, okay? Uh, just an amazing mark of what Jesus was able to do and what this man was, was feeling confident in his approach of Jesus. Why was he confident that Jesus would heal his daughter? Jesus had been going around, right, healing the sick and the poor who were brought to him. He had just uh, gone through, as we've gone through the Sermon on the Mount, I know we've switched over to Mark and not Matthew for today, um, but he had gone through the Sermon on the Mount. He had been healing the sick that were brought to him. He had been raising uh, uh, or bringing demons out of people. So they had seen these miracles happen, and that increased the confidence that this man had in Jesus healing his daughter, even though she hadn't been healed yet. Right? He wanted Jesus. He needed Jesus to do this healing. And he earnestly pleaded with him once he found him. Amen? Now, while Jesus is on his way to Jairus' house to heal his daughter, all these crowds around him, this woman who is in pain and suffering and just everything has gone wrong for her, Everything. I mean, she, she's 12 years she's been dealing with this medical issue. Doctor after doctor after doctor has sent her away, not able to figure out how to help her, how to stop this, how to fix what's going wrong. And she, she has this bright idea. If I can just touch his clothes, his, his clothes, not even him, not his, not his hand, not his feet, not, not his head, not anything. If I can just touch his clothes... I will be healed. Do you see how her faith allowed her to approach him like that and to touch him? And here's the thing, the disciples noted, and we, and we can take note of this as well, there were crowds all around. People were touching Jesus, bumping into Jesus. You know, and so it's not just the, the touch, right? You, you get there, right? It's not just the act of kneeling at the altar. It's not, just, it's not just saying the words, God, heal me. God, fix me. God, heal my daughter. It's not, it's not that. You've got to take what? You've got to take this faith into the equation. Do you believe that Jesus is going to do for you what you need him to do? Or do you approach him with hollow words because you don't really believe that God is capable of anything? Do we believe in miracles anymore? Do we believe that God is able and willing to do things in our lives that we can become thankful for? Do you believe that today? 
I'm afraid that we don't. And I'm including myself in this. I don't know how many times uh, my dad, um, I don't know what it was, two years, two year, a year and a half ago, two years ago, two and a half years ago, something like that. He had this, my dad has uh, epilepsy, and uh, they were wanting to do um, a, a, a kind of a new surgery on him to see if they could fix his seizures. Uh, and so he went in, he had the, the, the synapses that are firing all through your brain. We're going through, and my dad had, has still a, a dead spot in his brain where all the things that are firing uh, that, that make us work and all that stuff uh, make our brains function. They get to that spot and they just stop. Uh, that causes these seizures to, to happen for him. And so they thought that they could go in and repair um, these seizures. So the first part of the procedure, they had to put these two electrodes uh, into his brain. And they did that. And we thought everything was going to be fine. The, the next day, that was the first part, that was the first surgery. The next day was going to be a second surgery that uh, completed the, the procedure. Uh, so we, we, he, we were in Iowa City. He, he puts those two, elect- they put the two electrodes in. We go home and thinking the next day he's going to finish, they're going to finish the procedure and, and everything's going to be great. We get a call the next morning and he's, where they had put the electrodes, uh, he had a hemorrhage uh, on his brain, uh, blood hemorrhaging, and uh, they had to reverse that first part of the procedure and say they're not going to do the rest of the procedure. So my dad is now stuck with this and there's, no, there's now no way that they will risk um, this procedure again. So I say all of that just to give you background on the fact that I, I prayed. <laughs> I prayed a lot that this procedure would, would heal my dad. If you, if, you, <laughs> if you knew my dad before, uh, he, had a, he had a stroke a few years ago that made the seizures worse. Um, before that stroke, man, he was, he was so full of life and so uh, smart and he, I mean, just amazing. He's my hero. He's my best man at my wedding. Uh, and now, he's, just, he's a shell of himself. And it breaks my heart every time that I think about this. And I don't understand what God is doing sometimes. And so I stop and I think, was I not praying earnestly enough? Did I not have enough faith that God would do this for my dad like he did for these people here? Or as he's done for countless people all over the world. Miraculous healings. Things that he's used doctors for. Things that he's done without the help of doctors. And people have been healed. And I have to come to grips with the fact that, that, that our faith, while it is part of the equation, does not mean that we are going to get what we want. Amen? But that does not stop us from approaching Jesus with faith. You see, my dad very, very, very easily could have lost his life with that brain hemorrhage. And so our prayers very quickly changed from, God, would you use this this procedure to fix my dad, to God, would you keep my dad alive? Would you keep him around so that we can enjoy time, so that he can see a, a grandkid uh, maybe one of these days? And praise God, he got to see that. Uh, but I had to stop, and every time I think about the fact that God didn't heal my dad the way that I wanted him to, my dad is still here. My dad still gets to. I get to talk to him on the phone. I get to visit him at, at Christmas or Thanksgiving or, or whenever. I can do anything with my dad that I really want to. And I don't understand everything that God has done, but I'm grateful for what God has done. You see, as we approach God and say, God, here is my prayer, are we okay with saying, okay, God, here's my prayer, you do what you will do. Do you not, I want to point out here, as, as Jairus 
was with Jesus in the crowd. The woman approaches him. She gets healed. Now, uh, that's taking time away, right? Taking time away from Jesus getting to this, this man's daughter in time. And, and she dies. And these people come and they say, she's gone. Don't bother the teacher anymore. You see, they were okay, right? It's, 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 it was coming to a thing where they said, you know, it's, it's over. He didn't get here in time. Okay. It wasn't like, God, why did you take so long? God, why did you wait there? God, why did you, why did you dilly-dally around over here and not deal with my problem when I wanted you to? They were okay with what Jesus decided to do. And in that, oh, Jesus said, hold, well, hold up, hold up. Don't be afraid. Just believe. Are you there today? Can you say in your life, in the things that you're dealing with, in the problems that you have, in the losses that you've seen and, 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 have, and have racked your life, um, can you say, I'm just going to believe that God has a plan. I'm going to believe and not be afraid that God knows what he's doing and that God is going to give me something to be thankful for. Where is your faith in all of that? Do you believe that he is doing what you need him to do, whether you think it's what you need or not? Because I promise you he is. He is taking everything into account, and he is working everything out for the good of those who believe in him. Do you believe that this morning? Or are you afraid? Are you afraid because you think you know better than God? That's the question. The good things that you have in this life, which, praise God, thank you God for these great things. The things that trouble you, the things that you're afraid of, the things that don't seem to be resolving very well, 12 years this woman suffered. The things that you have to keep waiting for and waiting for and you're saying, God, what is going on? Why is this not being taken care of? I'm trying to do everything I can for you. I'm trying to do all this. Where is my answer? That's, that's fear taking over your belief that God has your life under control. And I tell you what, when you change your mindset to think that God has it in control, that I'm not going to be afraid even when the things don't seem like they're working out, even when everything seems like it's falling apart, even when everything seems like it's being just crumbling around you. Hold fast. Don't be afraid. Just believe that God has you in the palm of his hands. And you walk into that and you say, God, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to stand in the center of your will. I'm not doing anything. If we, look at, if we look at different things around us and start to be dragged off to the side and we get out of the center of God's will, fear really starts to take a hold. Then we start to try to figure things out on our own and we stop approaching Jesus. We stop praying earnestly for the things that we think we need or the things that we think we want or the things that we say, God, I don't understand. Here's what, here I am. What am I going to do? But the farther we get outside of the center of Jesus' will, the farther we get away from what he wants us to do, even in the midst of, of tragedy, we've got to stay believing. We've got to keep our fear at bay. Again, when, I, I, can't, I can never get past this. When the disciples were on the boat with Jesus and they said, Jesus, wake up, we're going to drown. We're going to die. Fix this problem. Jesus says, why are you afraid? Why? And I'm going to ask you the same question about the things that are ravaging your world, the things that are just throwing you back and forth, side to side. You can't get a grip on what's going on. Why are you afraid? Are you, do you believe that he has you in the center of his will or the center of his hand and you are in the center of his will? Because the one <laughs> one who can stop the wind and the waves is also the one that's guiding you through them as well. The only one that can stop the wind and the waves has you wrapped up so tightly 
And while, yes, sometimes water gets on board, sometimes, sometimes you've got to work really hard to keep that boat floating. You've got to keep it on course. You've got to do everything you can do. And you've got to work in this world to make sure you are staying right there in the center of his will. He is not going to let you drown if you follow him. And even in drowning, even in losing things in this world, we have the promise which gives us hope of life eternal with him. This world is not the end. Amen? Everything that we fight for in this world, all the, the comforts that we want to have and the, when we're uncomfortable and when, when things are getting hard and we say, God, I don't want to, this is too hard. Have you ever said that before? Have you ever stopped in the middle of the night, you can't sleep and you say, God, this is too hard for me to deal with. I can't deal with it anymore. You've got to do something. That's a great place to be. Because you're seeking after him and you know that you can't do it on your own. And yeah, you may need to pray for 12 years. You may need to keep that boat afloat with all the work that you can handle. But if you do it, there's nothing to be afraid of. God will take you through that storm. And if that storm takes you out of this world, even better, you get to wake up in glory. And there's nothing better than that. And when we raise our children to believe that no matter what is happening in this world around us, we are going to end up in heaven because of our strength and our following of God's will, man, there will be nothing that stops these children right here and those children back there from being warriors for Jesus Christ. When they see you not having any fear of battling this world and not battling the things in this world, but battling the darkness that is in this world, right? We don't, we don't battle against people. We don't battle against things. We don't battle against armies. We battle against the principalities of darkness. Okay? We're not in a war against people, okay? We're not in a war against Republicans or Democrats. We're not in a war against any body. We're in a war against the devil. And we have got to become unified as a church. And when we do that within our own families, and your children and your grandchildren see you standing firm, in the midst of tragedy, in the midst of sorrow, in the midst of being beaten by life, they will, they will learn that they can do it too. And that they are going to come out, you're going to raise, we are going to raise a generation of kids. They're going to become adults that are warriors for Jesus Christ because of what God is doing in our lives right now. And when we are struggling in this world and we stand firm, God will show up at the right time and he will give you something to be thankful for. Make sure you are approaching him and you are following what he wants you to do, praying earnestly, having the faith that if I can just get close enough to Jesus Christ, he is going to to do what he needs to do in my life at the right time, at the right place, with the right results. And everybody around me will see God's glory in that. I love this woman's response when Jesus stopped and looked around. Somebody touched me. Some, this power has gone out from me. Who did it? And she says, knowing what had happened to her, came, fell at his feet, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. And as I do word studies, the trembling with fear, there, there's, there, the, the word is not the exact same as, as awe. Like sometimes when we, when, we, when we read in the Bible to fear God, there's an awe, there's a reverence. This, this particular word also has some some apprehension, some, some being scared uh, in there, but it's not like terrified, like I'm terrified of what he's going to do to me. It's a, it's a respect of his power 
because she was just healed. Like no one has ever been able to heal her in 12 years and now all of a sudden she's healed. There's a respect there and understanding that, that Jesus is holding on to power that can do incredible things. Trembling with fear, she tells him the whole truth. And he says to her, daughter, daughter, he knows her. Your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. He knew her. And he stopped and he listened and he loved and he took care of. I'm willing to bet that she had thrown up quite a few prayers over the last 12 years of her life before that. But it was at that time when she came face to face with the one who could heal her that she was healed. Have you come face to face with Jesus? Do you just hope that someday he's going to take care of the things that you need taken care of? Or are you on your knees begging, pleading, earnestly seeking his answers for your life? That's the challenge. If you want God to do something in your life that you're going to be thankful for, that you're going to be so grateful for, you've got, you got to take the path that he lays in front of you. You've got to go after him. You've got to seek after him. And if you're doing things in this world that take you away from him, and then expect him, a whole other sermon <laughs> but we do that we live our lives the way we want and we expect God to bless that and we've got to get to a point where we are living our lives the way he wants us to we're going to uh, take communion together uh, and uh, if, if someone uh, Bonnie would you mind running back and grabbing Ellen and the, and the kids and Tammy I'm just going to have them all come in here, and I want you to uh, gather together with your families or, or whatever you want to do. We're going to partake in this together. And I want you, and I believe that God wants you, to truly begin seeking Him today. To truly begin asking him, God, I've got needs and he wants to hear your needs. He already knows them, but he wants to hear them from your lips, from your mouth. Tell him your needs. Tell him what is going on in your life. Don't be afraid of how he responds. And if he asks you to do something, dive in. If he asks you to, 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 to go a different direction than what you've ever gone, do it. Give in to the power of God in your life. All right. Kids are coming. Did you kids have fun back there? Good, 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 good. Let them keep coming here. Dorothy or, or Ellen, one of you guys, if you want to play. You want Ellen, too? Ellen can come up and play. Okay. Ellen's going to play that, that uh, Lord, we praise you. Um, and as, as she plays that, I'm going to have you guys just come up. The, the communion table's over here today. Uh, have you come up and take communion. And I want you to come up. If you need to get something worked out between you and God beforehand, take time to do that at the altar. Okay? Take time to make sure that you are standing right with Him. And then you can come and you can take communion. Just go ahead and take the, the bread and take it. Take the, the juice and drink it. 
and know exactly what you are thanking him for today. That he died on the cross as the sacrifice for your sins. That he is not in that grave anymore. He has risen. Amen? He has risen and he is alive on the throne and he sent that Holy Spirit back for us which is the same power that we have inside of us right now. Are you thankful for that this morning? Are you thankful for your family? Are you thankful for the different things that are going on in your life? Every good gift comes from our Father in Heaven. Do you believe that today? And I know some of the things that we've talked about, the miracles in the Bible, sometimes they're hard to believe. But if you can believe that every good thing that you have received in this earth comes from our Father in Heaven, if you can believe that today, that can set you onto the path that can open up your eyes to see all the other wonderful things that He has for you. To see that His Son's death on the cross was for you personally. Believe in something today that God has given an awesome gift to you. Believe. Receive his gift of communion. And then we can just be grateful together. If you would all stand with me, please. I'm going to say a prayer of blessing. Go ahead and come through. Take communion. If you need to spend time with him at the altar, don't hesitate to do that. Don't think that there's anything wrong with that. Get your heart right with God before you receive his gift. And then you can head to the back and we'll just spend a whole bunch of time loving on each other and having a good time. I can, I can smell the food now. It's going to be good. But pray with me. And be honest when you search your heart and you ask God to search your heart with you. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you so much. There is nothing better than you, than your Son and your Holy Spirit speaking to us and being powerful inside of us. Lord God, as we take this communion and we remember your broken body and your, your shed blood, and we know the purpose behind it, was to cover our sins. Lord God, let us feel the weight of that love today and to not turn away from it, to not deny it, but to finally, maybe for the first time, say thank you, God, for what you have done in my life. I don't understand it all. I don't necessarily get it. But I believe that you love me. Lord God, if we can just start there, you will take it. And you will grow that love and that knowledge and that understanding into something that we can grasp firmly a hold of. I thank you, Father, for your love. I thank you for your Son on the cross. And I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that is inside of each one of us once we accept your gift. In your name we pray. Amen. As you are ready, feel free to come forward as Ellen plays.